Carmen, why did you choose Brunswick to bring this new technology to Brunswick and Bear? Well, I'll tell you, I worked a long time on this technology and I wanted to make sure that I went with the right team. And I investigated and I found out that I checked out the staff. We got a great polling staff. I uh, wanted to work with you, uh, Billy O, and, uh, and Ray Edwards in the engineering department. And we've got great leadership at the top. We've got Warren Hardy, Ben Perrier, and Nick Stickler. So, uh, you know, you, you've got to decide when you want to give your technology to someone that you put it in the right hands. You've got Rick Benoit out here, too, that's given us great feedback. So you've got to have the right team. If you don't have the right team, you're not going to succeed. I don't care how good your technology Carmen, how long have you been developing this new technology? Well, I've been working on it for the last 10 years. I, I, I've got a, a lab about 40 minutes from my house that I drive to every day. Sometimes I work as much as 30 straight days because, you know, when you're an independent, you don't have hours, you get paid on performance. Describe chemical friction technology and what it is. Well, chemical friction is what you do to the power. You can have a thermal set like the urethane, you can have a you could have polyester. Now, in the past we had polyester. Now, polyester will not take a lot of additives, and you have to have plasticizers and additives if the system to increase the friction. So you're, you're, you're left with urethane and epoxy, and of the two, urethane is a lot faster to cure and, and a great polymer. So you have to go and put plasticizers, additives, Sometimes, we used to use fillers, which we found out is not the way to go, but this is the only way you can increase the chemical friction. Now, the difference between chemical friction and mechanical friction is once you make the polymer, it has a given inherent friction. Now, if you want to change that friction, you can take sandpaper and mechanically sand it with 400 grit, 500 grit, 4,000 grit, polish it, and to me, that's mechanical friction. But the chemical friction, if you had a polyester on today's conditions, that ball be sliding for 60 feet. So we've had to elevate our technology with today's oils and today's bowlers. These young bowlers are fantastic. And they got that high rev. So we had to develop a lot of chemical friction to combat this oil. Because if you sand the ball with the mechanical friction, and we've experienced this, where after about the second game, the ball wants to go back what I call the chemical friction, and the ball starts sliding. But if you've got the chemical friction in the ball, the ball will hold up for all six game blocks. That's the difference between chemical and mechanical. Carmen, so what's the difference between today's reactive balls and chemical friction technology cover set? Well, today's reactive balls do have some chemical friction and also, but they uh, are designed to slide and flip. And, and what happens is, it's not how much a ball hooks on the back end or how sharp it breaks. It has to go into rolling friction eventually. And this is why I developed this different type of chemical friction. Because when it goes into rolling friction, you want to have the molecules have an affinity for the lane so that there's no slippage as it's rolling. I don't care how big a ball breaks, it's like a car and everybody that's driven on ice or snow knows. You can turn the car this way, but it's sliding because it's not gripping. But if you've got the right chemical friction, if you've got the molecules that are gripping that lane, once it turns, it roll, goes into rolling friction and that ball will keep coming and drive right through those pins without with minimal reflection. Minimal. And, and what's the uniqueness of this molecule, or how does this molecule it's, work? It's the design. It, it's, it's a secret that me and Brunswick have. It's a chemical design of a certain shape. The structure of that molecule has to be designed so that it, when it gets into rolling friction, it will not slip. Carmen, if you can, without too much detail, without giving away too many secrets, Tell us about the work and how you work with Bayer, our chemical uh, company. I'm working with Mike Super at Bayer uh, Company, and the reason why, I, that's another reason why I wanted to go with Brunswick, is because they have Bayer. To me, Bayer is one of the greatest urethane companies in the world, 
and Mike Super is a very open-minded person. And when you come with new technology that's very different than people are used to chemically, because chemists think one way and people like us that are kind of creative, we're way out in space sometimes, but that's how come we can add. But when you put the two together, when you have a person like Mike Super and Barry that understands chemistry and you have a person like myself that has not been trained in chemistry, that looks at chemistry differently, when you put those two together, and me and Mike are working very well together, uh, we're making a Super Bowl. And let's say this also, it's not enough to work with Bayer and have these great ideas. When you bring it to Reynosa in Mexico where we make the ball, you've got to have the people that follow up on our thoughts and the product production doesn't do what you want, then you still have a problem. Right now, I've, I've got to compliment Mexico. They are doing a tremendous job. El Drabowski down there is doing a great job on this ball. Carmen, why, why, why name the ball? Sea system. Well, when you and I were in Billy O and, and uh, Ray Edwards and I were working together, I kept saying, I can't do this alone. I can work on the cover, but this is a system. I kept talking, this is a system. And then Billy O says to me, Well, why don't we just call it the Sea System? I said, It's okay with me. I'm not marketing. I'm only doing my job on the cover. And that's how that came about. But first of all, we're going to get the input from this. Ball. And then we've gotten some great response on this ball and Rick Benoit, like I said earlier, is out there in the field. He's going to give us some feedback and we're going to, we're going to do like Brunswick's always done. Brunswick has been a very aggressive company and we're, we're going to change things to keep in tune with today's conditions. You learn from the past, but you don't live in the past. And, and that's what I love about Brunswick. They are constantly present. And we're going to change according to what the conditions call. And uh, we're working on different cores now for the inside of the ball. And we're going to work on different covers. So this is a very exciting time. I mean, we just now opened the door. We just, this is going to be beautiful. I can't tell you how excited I am about this new technology and working with them because we've got a great team. And we're, we, we should eventually, not egotistically, we should dominate the bowling world. Hey, Carmen. Uh, we developed a new core for this ball, too, called the iBlock core. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, I'll tell you, the thing that I like the most is what I'm hearing from Rick Manoy, is you can have so many different kinds of layouts. It's very versatile, no only, and the cover stock is versatile, but the core is versatile. You can design it to go forward on a straighter line. You can open up the target a little bit. Uh, it, you can custom it to the bowler, and whenever you, you have a ball, you always have to remember, everybody has a little different release. And when you have a ball that you can custom to their release, well, then you have a great ball. Right. And how we designed that core was we started with a symmetrical inner, and we used an asymmetrical flip block, and that's what's given us that versatility for that core and all those different layouts. You know, I, I like that because, you know, some people like the symmetrical core, some like the asymmetrical core, others talk about a flip block. We covered all the bases, we got all three in there, and it, that gives us versatility. Plus, when we make the next ball, we'll come out with another type of core. And that, you, you, like I said before, no one ball is going to cover all conditions. And, and let's remember this, that Brunswick has many other balls in our line besides mine that when my ball isn't working just go grab another Brunswick ball because somewhere in our line we cover all conditions. So Carmen, how is this ball, uh, the Sea system 2.5, best used then? How would you use this ball? I would use it on medium oil lanes and the reason why I picked medium oil lanes for the first ball is because this is a new technology and I wanted people to get used to it. I didn't want to have it so strong that you had it on heavy oil only or have it so weak that you can only bowl with dry lanes. So I wanted to start in the middle of the road and then later on we're going to develop a line of balls with this technology and we're going to make a ball for heavy oil we're going to make a ball for lighter oil. 
but I wanted people to get a feel of this, and the best way to get a feel of new technology, don't go to the extremes, go in the mix. Remember, B is for Brunswick and we are Bowling.